some new guidelines on when to introduce peanuts to kids, and they're kind of a big deal, so listen up. So the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, which is a part of the National Institutes of Health, or NIH, recently came out with new guidelines about when we should be giving kids peanuts and what's the best course to take to help reduce the risk of developing a peanut allergy. Now in the past, it was recommended to delay the introduction of peanuts to children to help prevent a peanut allergy, especially if the child was at a high risk for developing a peanut allergy. But in recent years, we've had some new research come out that has really flipped that idea on its head and now we have some formal guidelines to go along with it. Now I've talked about this research before in past videos but just a little refresher one big study that had a big role to play in this whole discussion was one where they took children that were at a high risk for allergy so they define this as children that had severe eczema or had an egg allergy or had both. And they took these kids and they divided them into two different groups. One group had no peanut containing foods and the other group had peanut containing foods regularly. And they did this until the children were five years old. Then they looked at these kids and saw which ones had developed a peanut allergy and which ones hadn't. And what they found was that giving the kids peanuts actually reduced their risk for developing a peanut allergy by 81%. So that was the science, but now we have some guidelines. So these guidelines have been put out for healthcare providers to help them know how to advise their patients, what to do, and how to customize it to each individual child. So of course, you wanna to talk to your doctor, your pediatrician about this stuff, and figure out what is going to be right for your child and your situation. But in general, the guidelines divide kids into three different groups. So the first group are children who are considered high risk for developing a peanut allergy. So these are children that have severe eczema, they have an egg allergy, or they have both. So for these kids, it's recommended that peanuts are introduced at four to six months of age. But before any of that happens, when you talk to your doctor, they may want to do some sort of allergy testing. Then once they get those results back, that's what's gonna help them determine what the next step is for the child. So one thing that could happen is they might recommend that you introduce peanuts at home, or you might decide that you want to do it in the doctor's office under medical supervision. On the flip side, your doctor might say, no, this definitely needs to happen in the doctor's office with supervision or they might even recommend that you don't feed your child peanuts at all if it looks like they've already developed an allergy. The second group is children with mild to moderate eczema. So if a doctor determines that a child is in this group then the recommendation is to introduce peanuts at home at around six months of age. And if you or your doctor decide that you'd still prefer to do the introduction in the doctor's office under medical supervision then that's fine too. The third group is children that have no eczema and no food allergy. And for the kids in this group, the recommendation is to introduce peanuts freely. And I'll link the full guidelines in the description of this video if you want to take a look at them and read into them a little bit further. And of course, like I said, this is definitely something that you're going to want to discuss with your doctor. Now, there are a couple other things to think about when you're introducing peanuts. First off is you want to make sure you're giving the child age appropriate food. So for example, you don't want to give whole peanuts because that's a choking hazard. Also, no matter which group a child is in, it's recommended that peanuts not be the first food. So you want to get them started on solids, make sure that they're developmentally ready to be eating solid food before you go on to the peanuts. And I have to say, I'm really excited to see the research that's going on with allergies and these new guidelines about peanut allergies, because this is something that can affect a lot of people. I mean, because just think about all the things that something like a peanut allergy brings into someone's life. There's a lot of stress and worry around like what you can and can't eat, what's in certain foods, all that kind of stuff. And also with a small child, you know, they're caring caregivers are taking on a lot of that because a small child can't self-regulate or necessarily understand or take care of those things all on their own. And then as that child grows up, they're taking those things on themselves and having to deal with that throughout their life. And then you also have to think about the healthcare system. I mean, someone having an allergy for their whole life, they're going to be having a lot more interactions with doctors and stuff, whether it's just, you know, monitoring the allergy or if they have some sort of emergency situation, all of that kind of stuff. So if we can continue to learn more about this um, and do things to help 
help people possibly not develop these allergies in the first place, that's awesome because it's taking that burden off the individual, but it's also taking that burden off of the healthcare system overall. And let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts and feelings on these new guidelines, especially if you yourself have a food allergy or if you have little ones in your life that are starting to be introduced to solid foods. I hope you like this video and if you're new here and you want more healthy eating tips and nutrition info and healthy recipes, then make sure that you subscribe because eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle really doesn't have to be complicated and I want to show you how to do it. And if you're loving the free info here but you're finding that you need something more personalized, don't forget that I do offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching and counseling. So if you're interested in working with me, just let me know and we can get that set up for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time.